I'm so sorry. <laughs> is is going to sound counterintuitive. <laughs> um, this video might be complete shit, actually. I hope it's not. I hope you find this helpful. <laughs> Hey, how's it going? How's life? My name is Sophia. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I thought it would be fun to talk about how I personally read more books with ADHD. A lot of you probably might not know this because I rarely talk about this, but a few years ago, I was diagnosed with ADHD. As a result, I had to adapt a lot of things within my life in order to reasonably function in society. And because I am an avid reader, I thought it would be a good idea to put some put together a list of some tips and tricks that I use to keep me motivated to read more books. Now, before we get into the video, I want to give a disclaimer. I am not a medical professional. These are some tips and tricks that I personally use for myself. ADHD presents itself differently in different people, so what works for me might not work for you. So feel free to take my advice with a grain of salt you know, experiment, see what works best for you. But without further ado, let's get into the video. The very first thing that has helped me as a reader is getting a dedicated e-reader for books only. Before I would try to read on my phone and it was a horrible, horrible experience. I did try reading on my iPad and I would literally read a couple sentences and then for some reason I would find my way back on YouTube. I would find my way back on Twitter and so I decided that it was time for me to get a, an e-reader just for reading. So personally I decided to get a Kindle simply because I can borrow books from my library and it's easier for me that way. There are other variations of e-readers. So you have the Kindle, you have a Nook, and then you have the Kobo. My friend Tammy from Tammy Tries to Read actually has a very helpful video on e-readers that I will leave linked down below and somewhere up here for you guys to check out. The next thing that I have found super helpful in getting me to read more books are reading sprints. Um, for those of you who might not know, reading sprints are basically when you get together with friends. This could be on YouTube, Twitter, really any social media, and you read for a certain amount of time. And then once that time is up, you take a break, talk to your friends, chill out. And then once your break is over, you read again. And you basically repeat that cycle until nobody feels like reading anymore. Probably not the best explanation, but it's the best explanation you're gonna get from me. Personally, I like to participate in reading sprints here on YouTube. So there are booktubers who will do reading sprints where you'll read for anywhere from 26 to 30, sometimes 45 minutes. And then after that, you take maybe a five or 10 minute break and you're chatting with the YouTuber in live. I find it's more motivating for me to read when I'm reading within community. Even though reading is a solitary activity, I am more motivated when I'm having discussions and conversations and reading alongside other people. And so I do try to participate in reading sprints whenever I can. Granted, I don't always feel like participating in reading sprints. Sometimes, I'm not gonna lie, Sometimes I just join the reading spurts just to chill out, okay? <laughs> 
But the great thing about reading sprints is that they can be used for anything. If you got homework, if you gotta do laundry, like basically any form of productivity, you can do reading sprints alongside your friends. You can participate in reading sprints basically on any social media platform. I've seen people participate on sprints on YouTube, on TikTok. My preferred way to participate in sprints is here on YouTube. I just find it easier for my brain to participate when it's on this particular platform. This next tip is going to be a hit or miss and that is going to be readathons. Sometimes when I participate in readathons, I am completely successful, I am motivated, I am determined, I get through a crap ton of books while participating, and other times I have every intention of participating, and I read zip, zilch, nada, nothing. But I don't force myself if I'm not feeling it. When it comes to participating in readathons, I never have a set TBR simply because having a set TBR makes me feel restricted. It makes me feel suffocated and then I no longer feel like reading. So I will participate in a reading challenge readathon maybe once a year. I'm not going to participate in a readathon multiple times a year because personally my brain just can't handle that much so one to two times a year for me is the sweet spot and the fun thing about reading challenges is you can also participate in reading sprints while you're doing the readathon and they also have challenges and goals some of them have teams like readathons have become very intricate over the past couple of years and so it's up to you to decide if you want a more laid back readathon or if you want one with a lot of goals and teams or if you want to participate in a weekly or like a two-week readathon or a monthly readathon even yearly readathon that is up to you the next tip i have is probably the most important tip if not one of the most important tips and that is going to be setting attainable reading goals for me personally it helps to have a goal that i'm striving for but it has to be attainable because if it's not my brain will short circuit, it will not function, and I will just give up on the reading goal. For example, I set a yearly reading goal on Goodreads, and each year that passes by, I add 10 books to my reading goal. So if you look at my reading goals on Goodreads, you'll see one year my goal was 10 books the next year it was 20 the following year it was 30. um last year my reading goal was 50 books and so this year my reading goal is 60 books and then next year my reading goal will be 70. the reason why i set my goals in this way is because once i've reached a certain goal in my mind, I know I can achieve it. But because I want a little bit of a challenge, I'll end up increasing it by 10. That way I don't overwhelm myself and I'm not having a mental breakdown over not reading enough books for my goals. I also find that reading manga and graphic novels is very helpful. Um, something about reading short books, it keeps me motivated, especially when you're reading big ass books. Sometimes you need a little break. Sometimes you need a little something easy, <laughs> easy to digest, okay? The final advice I have for reading books with ADHD is going to be not forcing myself to read. I know it sounds counterintuitive because this is an entire video about how to read more books, 
but I find that forcing myself to read books when I'm not in the mood it puts me in a reading slump and it makes me hate reading like I have had moments where I have forced myself to finish books even though I wasn't liking it and as a result I could not pick up another book for the next two or three months because I hated my reading experience so much. Sometimes I'll end up reading 10 books in a month other times I'll end up only reading two but for me it's better to read two books that I've enjoyed rather than forcing myself to read a crap ton of books that I'm not enjoying and then for the next six months I literally cannot pick up a book. The time that I spend not reading books is a time that I can dedicate to other hobbies such as listening to music, watching TV or movies, writing. Um, I've recently got into gaming. I am a little, I'm a small baby gamer. Mm. <laughs> And so I'll just dedicate my time to those hobbies and once I'm in the mood to read a book then I'll return to reading as a hobby. Editing Sophia here because I actually forgot a tip and that is going to be listening to audiobooks. Over the past few years I have found that listening to audiobooks has really helped with my focus and concentration and it is one of the main ways that I consume literature. If you are trying to get into audiobooks or if you've attempted to get into audiobooks and it's just not for you, I would actually recommend hybrid reading. So reading a book physically while listening along to the audiobook. I know that is one way that helps me retain a lot of information. I especially like this for when I want to annotate books because listening along to the audiobook helps keep me motivated but it also keeps me on track. Hopefully editing Sophia doesn't have to make another return throughout this video. But yeah, bye. <laughs> Hopefully you guys found this video useful. Hopefully I shared some decent advice that you guys can adapt into your own reading lives. Just remember reading is fun. It's supposed to be a hobby. Don't force yourself to read. If your brain is just not functioning the way you want it to, it's fine. C'est la vie, you know? <laughs> That is going to be it for this video. I hope you guys found it helpful. Feel free to comment down below. Let me know some of your tips and tricks for reading more books. If you've reached the end of the video, feel free to give me a heart emoji. <laughs> um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope to see you guys soon with another video. And until then, I will see you soon. Bye.